to it. So we end up going back to the mall because I wants to go to Gucci and F wants to buy my friend some Dolce & Gabbana or something like that. Um, and so we went to one Gucci and apparently his stuff wasn't at that Gucci so he wanted to go to another one. I was like, oh, look, I'm tired. We've been walking around, you know, for the majority of the day. I was like, I'm tired. I'm just stay over at Dolce & Gabbana. He's like, please, I'll make it up to you. I was like, no, please. Like, I'm really tired. Like, you know, you could just meet us over here whenever you're done. We'll stay over here. And then he was like, okay, cool. Um, I ended up looking for my friend and F at Dolce & Gabbana. And they're up there trying to get, get him some shoes. Apparently, he had some type of limit on his card where he was supposed to... Um, he couldn't spend anymore and he didn't have any more cash. So he asked my friend, could she pay for it? And she ended up paying for it. And um, he was going to give her her money back. So basically, he had asked R to help him. Like, apparently he had did it for him. And R was like, like not really... Um, calling them back or not really trying to help him out and so at that point like his friend f felt like that was really selfish of him to not um not help him out when he helped him out and apparently he was the one that paid for the the suite he paid for the suite itself and all that so they were he was really mad at him and so he was like we're just gonna leave him at the mall and i'm like oh y'all we just got cool we just got back cool and like keep the peace can we keep the peace like can we not leave him at the mall and they're like no we're gonna leave him at the mall like he can find his own way home and i'm like okay i guess we'll leave we ended up leaving and he had asked where we were and I told him we were already already back home but he didn't he didn't blow up or anything. It wasn't like what I expected. Um but yeah, that was just that. Um we ended up having another deep conversation and I was like, "Why are we having another conversation about our feelings when we just talked a few hours ago and said we agreed to be friends why and it was basically one of those like the conversation was along the lines of i need to be respecting him as a man and that you know why don't i act like my friend and i'm like oh my god we just talked about this we just deaded everything we just squashed everything and you're bringing it up again like you are not helping this situation like this is crazy and i'm just like over at this point and i'm like why do they keep letting him in my room like why do they keep allowing him to come in here or even advising him to talk to me about this stuff they should have just been like if y'all good leave it alone why do y'all keep talking about it but it's just like I mean it was just it was too much you know what i'm saying it was just too much um so basically um that night i ended up talking to my friend um my best friend on the phone kaylin and we were just talking about it and i was like i don't understand why in the world do we have to keep you know having these conversations about it and like i thought we were good like i thought we were you know cool i just don't understand why we keep having these conversations about it i was like i don't understand why they keep leaving me and all that stuff so r he comes in and he comes to get a charger out of the room and i continue talking to my friend and as i'm talking i just feel someone in the room and y'all he's standing in the doorway listening to my phone conversation it was by far the weirdest crap i have ever experienced because i have no clue how long he was standing there but he was just standing there listening to my conversation then when i noticed him he walks out of the room and closes the door and contain like i see his foot his foot like shadows under the door and continuing to listen to my conversation on the phone and i'm like what is wrong with him like is he crazy like it was just weird like i just didn't understand why was he doing all this and we just got back 
cool like we just made everything right like why is he being so extra then I go on his story and he posts on his story about my friend and his friend and that they all best friends and he you know he's really gonna um you know give her a gift because she's just such a good person and she just always knows how to talk to him and she's like his sister and I'm like I'm over it <laughs> like I'm over it I don't want to see it anymore this is extra this trip has become beyond extra for me like I cannot handle it it's extra like I don't know why in the world you're trying to get a rise out of me it's like what are you doing that for like I ended up unfollowing him because I was tired of seeing the weird like subliminal type of stuff that was kind of like well she's my friend too type crap and I'm like uh-uh I don't have time for this I ended up like I said um um deleting him off of Instagram and apparently you know people they were feeling some type of way that night not because of the unfollow because they hadn't seen that but because I wasn't letting him sleep in my bed with me meanwhile my friend was in the other boy's bed and I wasn't letting him sleep in the bed with me and I'm like when did I sign up for him to be sleeping in the bed with me like I just felt like I was in a whole nother universe like the way that everybody was thinking was mind-boggling to me like I couldn't even believe people y'all were expecting me to sleep in a bed with this boy that I ain't even interested in I'm just supposed to do it just because or whatever and because there's not um a, enough beds okay well that could have been solved if we got two separate rooms like we asked for in the first place with two different beds but you all decided to get a suite with two bedrooms and two queen beds so y'all don't want to sleep on a bed together so that means one person got to sleep on the couch I'm not sure why that's my problem but everybody wanted it to be my problem because Deanna is the problem when it comes to everything Deanna's the problem I should have acted a certain way I should have let this boy sleep in my bed I should have let this boy kiss me hold my hand that ain't me that ain't me and that's never gonna be me and I feel like being my friend at all you should have known that that was not me and y'all shouldn't have let him continue to come in and keep talking to me. Y'all should have listened to me when I told y'all I was uncomfortable and all that stuff. And that's why what happens the next day is what happens. Alright, so this is day 7 of the trip. Um, it is 4-6-2019. And this is when shit hits the fan. This is the part that everybody's been waiting for. This is when stuff starts getting crazy. I wake up the next morning um, alone in my bed. Um, my friend and F have left me in the hotel alone once again. So I think this is probably, I've been left alone probably about five times or so during this whole trip. And we were only there at that point for about four or five days. Um, and I'm just like, whatever. Um, I get a knock on the door in the morning at that point I don't want to talk to him because I feel like he's by far the creepiest person for sitting there listening to my phone conversation so I was like no like I'm getting ready um, and which I was I started getting ready and got into the shower as I'm in the shower I hear the door open it's not the shower door like the bathroom door it's the door to the room I hear the door open and then the door closes Something in me tells me he came in the room and took the bags that he bought for me. And that's exactly what happened. He came in the room and took the bags and I got on the phone with my friend and I was like, uh, girl, yeah, he took the bags. And she's like, why would he even do that? I was like, I don't know. I don't really care at this point. This trip is getting weird. This trip is getting extra and I'm just not here for it. I hear him. He knocks on my door again and I'm like, I am not dressed what do you need he proceeds to open the door anyway I close the door back he is struggling like pushing the door it slams into my like wrist like this area right here um like and my towel falls down I don't think he sees me but like I'm naked like I don't have like a towel on and he's forcefully trying to push open the door and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you are insane. You already took the bags. What do you need to talk to me about? What do you need? Like, 
What do you want to talk to me about? Why are you sitting here forcing your way into my room? Like, are you crazy? He's out there yelling. And I mean, because he has an African accent, I can't understand a goddamn thing he's saying. But he's in there yelling and cursing. And I called my friend. And I was like, you all need to get back here, like, immediately. He has tried to bust through this door. Um, he has hurt my wrist. And y'all need to get back here. She was like, oh my God, like we're on the elevator. We're coming back now. But this is what the hell I was saying. Y'all keep leaving me alone. Like all this stuff could have been prevented. You know what I'm saying? Like it really could have. And I'm sitting here alone in that situation. What if he would have got in that room? You know what I'm saying? What if he would have got in that room and my towel was down and he decided he wanted to do something? Or what if he decided he wanted to hit me because he was so angry? But y'all weren't there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all weren't there to help me or y'all didn't listen to nothing that I was saying. And that's just what's mind-boggling to me is that it even got to that point. When they finally get there, I'm in the room sitting there talking to them about it and I was like, like he is nuts like he is doing too much he was trying to bust through the door and all that stuff he's out there yelling like you need to get out you need to get out i was like i ain't going nowhere like i mean this room is under my name like i'm not going anywhere he was like yeah we need y'all need to get her out she needs to get out of here and all that then he coming in the room coming in my face yelling at me um and his friend is trying to stop him from coming near me. And he was like, uh, she's a bitch. She's a bitch. I was like, your mama a bitch. And then he started going crazy again. And I'm just like, I don't have time for this. Like, I, I literally am not the person to deal with situations like this. Because I am hot tempered when somebody takes me to that point. Like, I'm not just normally. But I am when somebody takes me to that point. And it was just getting crazy. Like, you know, his friend is trying to calm him down and basically, you know, it was agreed that he was just going to go and get his own room and, you know, we were going to stay in that room. But it was just extra and that's not even the worst part. That that was just the start of a crazy day. After that, they, you know, they're like, oh, you know, we're just going to go ahead and go to the desert. Forget all this ever happened. We're all three of us are just going to go to the desert. So I'm like, okay, cool. We all getting ready to go to the desert. And as I'm coming down the elevator, my friend is already down there. And she's like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, well, R is coming with us. Like, I didn't know that he was coming. And sure, y'all didn't know he was coming. Because y'all couldn't have gave me a heads up. I'm actually walking down there. And that's when y'all want to tell me that he's coming after he didn't just bust through this door on me. Okay. I end up, um... We end up going and it's like we all have a good time or whatever but it's just really awkward. On top of that, you know, as the night goes on, he is being extra as hell at the little performance that like that happens after the safari, you know, part. Like if you've ever been to Dubai, uh, there's like a belly dancer performance and all that stuff. So he's being super extra. He's basically saying oh my god i'm gonna give you my watch telling this to my friend i'm gonna give you my watch i'm gonna fly you to nigeria i'm just, like i'm just like boy like you're trying to do all this to get like a rise out of someone who do not care fly her like i, I don't care at this point because it's you know like it's weird like you you going out of your way just to be weird um then like the night goes on we ended up leaving you know the safari when it was over and um we were really hungry no i'm sorry that didn't happen we went back to the hotel and got ready because we were going to go to a nightclub so we were going to go to base dubai and so we ended up going to the nightclub or whatever nightclub was fun while we were there me and my friend we were gonna take off our shoes and start dancing and the security guard was like no y'all gotta put y'all shoes on um R goes over to him literally like he trying to fight him like and I think it was more so because he said it to my friend like letting my friend know oh well I got your back like I got your back or whatever so was getting into it trying to get into it with the security guard and we kind of like boy like and you want people to think you're not aggressive you're like overly aggressive like you doing too much 
And so we ended up leaving. Um, we go to the cab and we waiting out there forever for them. They taking forever because apparently, you know, they're trying to get him a girl or something like that. And I'm like, okay, but I'm hungry. So I don't really care about that. Like, I'm hungry. Um, we end up going to the seafood place and getting something. They're rushing us. And I'm like, what is their problem? So my friend's like, oh yeah, apparently, you know, they're trying to get like a pros, like the uh, boy R is trying to get a prostitute or something. So, you know, they're trying to meet up with her and all that. So that's why they're trying to like rush us or whatever. And when I get in the car, I'm like, y'all, y'all was doing all that over like a prostitute or whatever. And my friend gets mad because she feel like, oh, well, everything she says to me, I don't need to repeat. But I feel like, I mean, that's probably true. But at the end of the day, girl, if you don't want me to say nothing, tell me I say nothing. But at, at the end of the day, I'm on this trip too. So I need to know why I'm being rushed as well. Like, what I didn't know what the issue was. Anyway, so, y'all, we are getting to the end because this is a long ass video. We finally get back to the hotel. Um, as we get back to the hotel, um, I'm in my room eating, you know, the leftover, I mean, well, the, the seafood or whatever that we had just gotten, and R decides to come in my room. Once again, I'm thinking in my head, why do they keep letting this buffoon come in my room? Like, I just don't understand why they keep letting him in here. Like... Is crazy. What else do we need to talk about? We already have came to a common agreement that we don't like each other. We don't mess with each other like this. Why do y'all keep letting him come in here? Anyway, he comes in here talking to me. Like, I don't even really know what the heck he's talking about. But at that point, I'm just kind of like, if you aren't trying to apologize to me from earlier, you need to go elsewhere. Like, I really don't care what you're talking about. And he starts getting mad, but I'm like, it is what it is. If you aren't apologizing to me, and I kept saying it, if you aren't apologizing to me for hurting my wrist and for busting through that door, I have nothing else to say to you. At that point, which I don't remember just all of the context that was said, but at that point, I mean, it just went left. Like, he started yelling. I started yelling you know then that's when my friend and F came in um, you know trying to set like calm down the situation he started yelling but then he starts getting close to me like he's gonna hit me and I'm sitting down on the bed so I stand up on the bed like don't get in my face like you're gonna hit me like what is wrong with you like you are really tripping right now I was like, I don't know how in the world y'all do it in Nigeria, but that ain't how I do it. Like, period. You're not about to be doing me like that. You're not about to be acting like, because I'm a woman, that you're going to talk to me how you want and um, step up to me like how you want to. Like, that's dead. Like, that's not happening. I will pause at this part just to say that I feel like in that situation, I probably should have been more calmer because I didn't know he was nuts. I didn't know and so if if I would have known that I think maybe I would have handled the situation a little bit different but at that point I was hot like I was I was mad because I'm just like what the heck like I'm so tired of having the same conversation with this boy like what aren't you understanding about anything like you cannot be this dumb to not realize what I'm trying to say to you and it was just pissing me off that you know you step into me like you're really about to hit me and it's like ain't nothing ever been that serious for you to even be that hype you took your bags back you know what I'm saying we barely talked for the whole night so what else do you have to talk to me about like he starts going crazy, yelling, she needs to get the fuck out of here. Well, I'm going to need to get her the fuck out of here. Ends up calling the cops on me, which I will insert the clip of me sitting in the room um, in the dark. Because I was just going to go to sleep, but he ends up calling the actual cops on me.
win. Then we're actually going to talk about the other Yeah, I'm not feeling comfortable with her. She's being Hi, cool. yes, this this room. And when the cops come, I'm like, um, the room is in my name. He was like, well, who paid for the room? And the issue is in Dubai is that they don't care about women. So they didn't really care about anything I was saying. They didn't really care that the room was completely under my name. They just only really cared who paid for it. And it was just like, how y'all, how can someone use my passport to get a room? But I got to get out the room. So it was just like being extra his friend f was trying to like calm him down like and tell the people to leave like no like you know she don't gotta leave and i think he was really only doing that because then my friend would be leaving with me you know what i'm saying and they wouldn't be in the same room and so you know when they left he was still shouting and going crazy he said he was gonna put me in something and i don't know if it was the african word or for a body bag but that's what it sounded like and he was clearly threatening me and it was just like what the hell he was just out there yelling and I ended up going into the room with F and my friend um just talking his friend starts packing because I basically said like I will um while we were having the conversation, I basically said, when I get back to America, I'm going to handle this situation. And he didn't like that. And that's why he started threatening me. And when his friend was like, well, why would you even say that? What would you even mean by that? I was like, I mean, when I get back to America, I will get a restraining order because he's he doing too much. He was like, why do you have to involve the government in it? Why do you have to? I was like, he's threatening my life and you telling me not to involve the government in it to save him? Why do I care if he's sitting here threatening my life? And so that's when he starts, I guess, so he starts getting scared. And that's when he's F. And he starts getting scared and that's when he starts packing his stuff because he's ready to leave. And because whatever they had so much money so whatever whatever they're doing is probably illegal and when i mentioned the restraining order nobody was having it everybody like the that's when the boys were like she gotta go you know what i'm saying like we don't mess with her no more because you know she gonna involve the cops or the government or whatever with it and at that point that's when all stuff went out the window and that's when my little friendship with F went out the window too because at that point he didn't like me anymore. And so the last part of the night. The last part of the night happens when um, we're basically in the room and R comes in the room and he basically says, he's like, you know what? You're lucky because if you were here with anybody else, I don't know what would have happened to you in Dubai. Like something probably would have happened to you while you were out here. But you lucky that you were nice people. And we all kind of look like, why are you saying it? Like what is wrong with you? Like, I mean, just thinking this dude is a straight up psychopath. And we don't even really know what to think. And it's just like, at that point, you know, like he was laughing and like, <laughs> It was weird y'all. It was weird. It was scary like he was laughing and doing all this extra stuff and I was just like Yeah, this is like this has gotten serious like this is You know been taken to the next level, you know what I'm saying and I was not expecting this and It was really scary to be in a situation and to also have to be in the same room with People that didn't like you anymore, or, you know wanted to hurt you um, I ended up going back into my room um, and sitting down like on the bed and I think I was texting my friend and that's when he came back into the room. I immediately pulled out my phone and started recording and that is the clip that I'm going to insert here. If you touch my phone, I, like please, like at this, this is scaring me, like for real, this is getting crazy. Like, 
please don't close the door. I'll, I'll, don't do it. Please. Don't. Please 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 back up, please. Like, I feel like you're gonna hit me and I'm getting scared. So please, what? please stop. <laughs> no, I need to come in now. He's literally like blocking me from like walking out of the door. Can she, can she walk out the door? So basically, um, as you all can see on the clip, um, he basically comes in my room um, as when I start recording um, and he's about to close the door. He tries to, he closes the door and then proceeds to try to take my phone. And then he starts blocking me from leaving out of the room. I call for my friend to tell her like he won't let me out of the room and he finally lets me out and i'm trying to like say i'm like what's wrong with you i go into the living room and uh, you know after you know a few minutes i try to come back in the room he's um he's out of the room or i think he might still be standing in the room and i'm trying to go in there but he won't leave and my friend was like can you please just like leave the room so she can go in there um, and that's when, when I walk by, he says like, well, are you tired yet? Are you tired yet? And I'm like, this, this is crazy. And that's when I'm kind of like, I really feel like, can you like back up off of me? Like really feel like you're going to hit me. And he was like, hit you. And then he starts laughing and it was just, I mean, like y'all, it was just like one of the scariest situations I've ever been in because he really seemed like he was really crazy and it is just crazy that all this was just happening because I didn't like him I mean it was all happening because I'm guessing something was expected out of me that was not relayed to me because I thought we were here just to do the whole fiance visa thing and apparently he wanted a lot more than that and I just wasn't expecting anything to go down like that and it just scared the crap out of me because I'm like at this point you know my friend is in the other room trying to calm down the other boy make sure he don't leave instead of being in the room with me but you know she felt like well maybe she was in a tough situation because you know she didn't want she wanted to be around them so she knew what they were talking about what they were trying to do and all that stuff so we both just weren't oblivious but i do feel like at that point it should have clicked for us that we needed to get out and get our own room um and not stay in that room with them but i don't know it was just it just wasn't like clicking i ended up like you know like just sitting in the room just kind of just thinking about like everything that happened and he comes in my room again y'all so this is the third time he comes to my room 
and I was like, can you please, please leave me alone? Like, please. Like, I don't know how else to say it. I don't know what else to do. Like, can you please leave me alone? Because you are really scaring me. I really feel like you are crazy. And I cannot, like, you know, I, no. Like, I don't want to be around this anymore. Y'all, he starts crying. Be talking about, you called my mom the B word. and I'm like, he is insane. Like, he has lost all his marbles like there is literally something wrong with this person and this person literally needs mental help because there's n there's something not right with him and it was just crazy that you're sitting there crying because I called your mom a B after you called me the B word and you're crying when you're the one who are throwing out all these threats and all that and I was like can we just please just agree to leave this alone with this whole visa thing is not gonna happen like it's not gonna happen anymore you know you have crossed like boundaries like and I could not be in a situation like this for you know three to five years having to deal with it we just need to agree that we are not you know compatible in any sort of way and not even as friends and we just need to coexist the next couple days that we have left on the trip and so you know that's basically what we agreed to and that was that the next day comes around in the morning and once again my friend and F are gone Leaving me in the room with a boy who just threatened my life the night before and did all that crazy stuff. And you thought the best idea was to leave me in the room with him again. And I was just like, like, what the heck? And so when I had texted her. She was like, Deanna, we need to leave. Like, we need to get on the flight because we don't know if he's going to cancel our ticket. We need to leave, like, tonight. Um, and all that. Mind you, he never said that. So, you know, she was saying, well, he was going to cancel our ticket, so we needed to leave. And uh, basically, which I'll attach the message, show you all the message, she was basically blaming everything on me. She was basically saying that, you know, I need to learn how to act when it comes to situations like this and that this was on me okay sorry guys I had to shut it off and come back on here because my neighbor wanted to go for a walk so that's what we did but anyway like I said um, that everything ended up kind of being blamed on me for it like everything that was happening and I definitely cried because I just felt like damn like I'm on a trip like the reason why everyone is on this trip together is kind of because not because I paid for it but because I kind of green lighted all of the stuff like as far as green lighting us doing this little marriage thing green lighting as far as trying to get my friend to go saying that it was alright if he brings his friend and all that stuff and so all these people are acting like they are against me because they feel like I should have acted a certain way or that I should have you know did what I had to do whether that be having sex with him or um, doing sexual favors for him because of what he was giving to me and I just felt like that was absolutely absurd it was absurd for my who I thought was my friend to basically tell me that this whole thing is your fault and you could have prevented it if you would have acted a certain way and all that and like I said I just I am I just couldn't have predicted that so basically um, she told me that F he doesn't like me anymore um, because of what I said, um, and whatnot. And so, um, at that point I was just done with it. I just took time out to talk to my best friend, Kaylin, and, you know, we were just talking about the whole situation. I ended up going to the spa by myself and going to go get a massage. And then my friend was asking where I was and... You know, I told her I was going to go to Nando's, which is like a, 
a popular restaurant and at least I know it was like the UK and so I was like I've always wanted to try Nando's so I'm gonna go to Nando's and she told me she was gonna meet me there halfway through she ends up falling asleep and never ends up meeting me there so I take um you know a cab there and back like by myself um, he actually ended up stopping me like when I was going down the elevator to make sure that I was safe and this is R who ended up stopping me and it's like that was weird because you went from threatening my life to caring about my well-being when you didn't care about my well-being yesterday you didn't care about me feeling scared you didn't care about any of that so why all of a sudden do you care about me so it was just really weird um the next day I woke up, um, of course, my so-called friend is gone once again. And um, at that point, I was just over it. I was um, determined to go to the beach. So that's what I did. I went to Nikki Beach, Dubai, and I went by myself. And I just decided that I was going to stay there until it was only an hour or so before it was time to go um get on the airplane and go home um so you know i was just taking my time and by the way we decided not to leave early because apparently he wasn't going to cancel the tickets he just wanted to make sure you know that we got home safe and all that stuff which was it's like whatever but you know it's like i'm grateful he didn't cancel the tickets but it's like how you act crazy one minute and then act like you care the next minute that's beyond me but um like I said, I went to Nikki Beach, you know, took some pictures, ate some food, um, and then ended up going back to the hotel. When I get back to the hotel, she's still not back, and um, I end up going to go take a shower because I had sand everywhere. Um, as I'm taking a shower, I hear, like, knocking on the door. It's, like, constant knocking. It ends up being R, and I look out the keyhole, and I go back in the shower, and like I mean I just didn't care at that point it's like I didn't really want to be alone with you in the first place you know you want me to open the door do favors for you and you have literally you know treated me like I am crap you know because I didn't want to to be with you that way um and so yeah he ended up getting in eventually but like I said I took my shower and all that was waiting hoping to go to the airport early we ended up going to the airport a little late because she came home later and all that stuff she had this master plan which i don't know i don't know if i feel like it's a lie or not but she said that she was gonna get back the bag for me um but she didn't really tell me any of the details about it um as i was leaving as we were leaving to get in the cab to go um basically um her and R ended up going you know somewhere in the hotel and I'm just like can she hurry up like I'm ready to go at this point and apparently she was saying that she had convinced him to give her the bag and then he had um they had said like I guess when you go through TSA or whatever they were gonna take out the bag and then they were gonna know like they were gonna know and it was gonna ruin my friendship with her just I don't even know like I don't even know if any of the stuff that was told to me was lies or not um she also mentioned that as we were leaving there was a prostitute there and um which was a girl we met in the club and um she was walking like too close behind them and I guess F that's the guy that my friend was talking to um was annoyed that she kept walking so close behind them and I guess he kept telling her to stop and then eventually he was like can you fucking stop walking behind me before I punch you in your fucking face like just some like crazy shit and I don't know like the the trip you know ended up being over at that point we ended up getting in the the cab and going to the airport and then as we're at the airport you know I kind of had already made up in my mind that I wasn't going to be cool with her because I felt like the way she handled the trip was more so on the boy's side and was not on my side at all um and didn't really care about my well-being in the situation um and so 
um, actually, she ended up telling me that apparently R, you know, the guy that flew us out there, wasn't even as crazy as his friend uh, F. And he was crazy on some other stuff. He apparently said that he would have, or I think R said that, that they, whoever said it, they said they would have hired someone for $200 to throw me out of the hotel window. And they also said that um, they were going to try to plant a watch in my bag and call the airport and say that I stole it so that I would get caught up in Dubai. And it's crazy because one, I don't know if this is a lie or not. And I'm going to tell you why I don't know if it's a lie or not. But if this is true, it's just really sad that all of this was because I didn't like him like that. All of this was because I just wanted to be friends. All of this was because... You know, I went in there thinking it was business and it clearly wasn't. And like I said, I could have been very naive in the sense to think that nothing like this would have went down. But it's just like, if we're going out there for a purpose, and we already discussed before that it ain't going to be anything past that. Why did it end up being anything past that? So... I don't know it was just a very scary experience it taught me a lot about like trusting people um, and it also taught me a lot about my friendships um, you know the girl that I was friends with um, I cannot trust her with any inch of my body at this point and I really wish that though the majority of the trip I would say was fun we were able to do what we wanted to do and really we really didn't have to spend any money while we were out there but it was just you know the last couple days that ended up being like the craziest days like everything was just building up to those last couple days but I will say that the time the fun that we did had I wish that I would have brought somebody else there that was more grateful to experience it and not wasted my time bringing someone who genuinely only really cared about herself in the situation um apparently in her defense she says that she stayed with the boys because she wanted to know what they were talking about and so they wouldn't do anything but at this point i feel like that is a load of bs and the reason why is because um i later found out she was still following both of them now for people that you said were going to kill me why are you still following people that you said wanted to kill me? Now, I feel like anyone who says that they want to kill someone or even has a thought that they are capable of killing someone over a situation like that should be mentally evaluated. And that should not be someone you would want to be around, whether they directed it towards you or your friend. And even if we weren't friends, if someone walked on the street right now and said, I would kill that man right there, that would be somebody I would steer clear of. Like, I'm not sure why in your right mind would you still be following and communicating with people you claimed tried to kill me that's that um and we had our little talk about that she felt like she didn't she doesn't unfollow people and blah 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 a load of bs and um a few weeks after that which there's the real tea guys um she actually ended up going to australia to meet f the one who was making the real threats um, which she even told me she thinks that R was just bipolar and F was the one that was actually crazy. He was the one that was saying the most crazy stuff when everything was going down. And she, you know, he ended up apparently flying her to Australia. And I just feel like, I mean, you're welcome. That's one. <laughs> You're welcome because I put you in the position to even meet someone. But then on top of that, I just feel like I never would have done. I would have done. I wouldn't have done that to her. And her and her, you know, she told me that I should have been happy for her. I should have been happy for you being with someone who said they were gonna kill me. I should fully support your decision 
being your friend when you told me that they wanted to kill me. So I should I should be like, yeah, girl, he only threatened my life. It ain't no big deal. Be with him, love him, girl. I was all for them on the trip. I'm telling, I was all for them. But when you told me he wanted to kill me, that's when that nice shit went out the window. That's when I no longer care. I don't really care what he did for me while I was there. Anything like that. Because at the end of the day, they literally sat there and act like they did. You know, because they paid for stuff. That was so extravagant. But we had our own money. I could see if we came out there with no money. We had our own money. You all chose to do that. So I could give a rat's ass whatever he did for me while I was out there. I was really, really felt like he was a cool person but after that that's it and like I said that says a lot about a person that you know first it was you know you're trying to purposely spend time around somebody so they can constantly keep buying you designer stuff and whatnot but it's not about money this is about somebody that you actually like that doesn't that doesn't really sound like that and I feel like it's really sad what people will do for money and it's really sad that I keep I keep not realizing the signs when it comes to bad girlfriends and women that you know women that are benefiting off of my you know opportunities so that's just kind of how I look at it of course you know like I said I have I'm attaching all the the you know proof of everything and all of that and whatnot um but you know what I will say like I said I do feel like I have fault in this situation I'm not gonna sit here and say that I don't I do feel like I when I should have never went I really shouldn't have I should have thought long and hard about going and I should have realized that everybody doesn't have my best interest at heart everybody isn't gonna be nobody especially men you know men aren't gonna always go by whatever they say and I feel like this is a warning for just girls who are trying to to do things like this I feel like this is multiple warnings this is to one not even try to do some illegal crap like that 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 was one that was the first mistake two don't just be going with people like you don't know i mean honestly if they're willing to fly you somewhere they should be willing to meet with you in person in your city in public with your friends they should be trying to make you fully comfortable it shouldn't take you going to a whole nother state i mean a whole nother country to meet someone um and three, I would just really say watch who you call your friends. Watch the people that you keep company with because a lot of people are out for the wrong things. A lot of people, you know, want these lavish lifestyles and they will do whatever it takes to get it. They do not care who they hurt. You know, they do not care about anything when it comes to that. And what I will say, another one of my thoughts was lying about it. Um, but that's I'm like I'm fully telling the truth and whether I lied to my family or told the truth what happened was what happened like as far as me being left all the time you know him trying to bust through doors and all that stuff still happened it, I didn't make myself look better in the situation by not fully telling my family why I was there I like I said, even when I did tell my aunt or whatever, it was one of those things where clearly I thought we were down there for business. And I feel like the influence from the other people who were on the trip was absolutely ridiculous to be insinuating and telling me that I need to do sexual things with this person in order to make the trip be good. I need to act a certain way in order to make the trip be good. And that's, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. So like I said, um... I'm not going to say this video is really intended to bash anyone, but like I said, this is my story and I'm telling it how I want to. Um, as far as if people get offended, um, that's so far from being my problem. So, I would like to thank you all for watching this super long video. Um, I'm not going to say I hope you enjoyed it, but I really hope that you all kind of took something from this and kind of learned some of the lessons that I did. 
if I made anything like unclear or anything please feel free to comment below and let me know what I need to clear up or whatever I am an open book so if there's anything that you want to know or anything about this story that you feel like you know there's a missing piece or anything please let me know because it is a very long story and it is one of those stories where I try my very best to get every piece of information just so you all can see how everything played out um again thank you so much for watching this video I love you all bye